let's look at how to do animation in MATLAB. Uh, for that, I want to take a dynamic system and simulate how it behaves in time with a little picture drawn in MATLAB. As an example, let's look at a gantry system. That corresponds to an overhead um, block, the kilogram mass here, that moves back and forth at the roof of a shop floor. Attached to that block is a large chain carrying something, so if you want to pick up an engine block and move it across the shop floor, um, that'd be this system. What I want to do is simulate how it behaves in time. So when we're done, I'm going to run a MATLAB script, run cart in this case, perhaps. And I want to see how it behaves. Here I gave it an initial condition, and it just swings back and forth for the engine block, which also call, causes the top mast to uh, oscillate back and forth. How do you do that? Well, in MATLAB, there's a thing called an M file. I can create a routine and have it execute as long as I give an extension.m. So here I've got a routine called runcart.m. When I type in runcart, MATLAB looks to see is there a variable called runcart? If not, is there an M file called runcart? And there is, so it runs this routine. What this routine does is sets the sampling rate, 0.01 second, sets the initial condition, here the Four vectors of x would be position, angle, velocity, angular velocity. So it's going to start out at zero position for x, twisted at 0.5 radians, and then I'm going to let it go. The routine for simulation is pretty much always the same. First, given the states, find the acceleration. That's the dynamics. Once I've got the acceleration, integrate to find the new set, sets of states, 0.01 second in the future, and then display it. And let's look at each of those routines. First, let's look at the dynamics. To come up with the dynamics, we'll be using a Lagrangian formulation, which you specify the energy in the system, do some math that we'll cover shortly. What you wind up with is eventually the dynamics. Given the states, that's the position and angle, x and theta, I can calculate the acceleration, x double prime and theta double prime. Once into the acceleration, I can integrate to find the position 0.1 second in the future. The dynamic subroutine would execute this set of equations. Um, here, the internal external force is zero. So given theta, I can calculate this term. I'll call that B. Given theta, I can find this term. Take M inverse times B. And I can find the acceleration of the system. Let's do that in MATLAB. That would look like this in MATLAB. I've got an M file that's a function. That's a subroutine that when I call it, call something called cart dynamics, it returns a variable dx. X I'm passing to the a subroutine. That's the states of the system, position x, velocity, and their derivatives. Uh, this part right up here is just a comment statement. If I type in help cart dynamics, it'll spit that out in case I forget how to call it. This part right here is what I just showed in the previous slide. The acceleration is m inverse times b. Calculations for b and m given the states theta. Find the acceleration right here. And then when I'm done, pack them into a 4 by 1 matrix. So that dx is the derivative of the input. Derivative of x is dx. Derivative of q is dq. Derivative of dx is the acceleration in x derivative of dq is acceleration in q. So if I pass it, I call that subroutine, passing it uh, x is 0, theta is 0.5 radians, x dot is 0, theta dot is 0, it returns the acceleration, the derivative of the states. Once I get the dynamics, all I need to do is integrate. To go 0.01 second in the future, take the previous state, say this point x, I know the derivative, extrapolate by dt, and I now have x, 0.01 second in the future. So given the dynamics and integration, I can go back and forth. Given the state, calculate its derivative, 
kind of great. Here we go. Integrate. Come on, guy. Integrate. And I get the states one and one second in the future. Repeat. And I'll put one second in the future. 0 0.02. 0 0.03. And so on. If I do that, I've got streams of numbers displaying on the screen. It'd be nice if I could draw a picture to animate it. So this is a subroutine that animates the cart. Given the state's x, plot it. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is draw a line on the screen, a little box for the cart. That's at location x. Draw a line, and then the mass. This is theta. The first step is draw two points right here, at minus 2 to plus 2. And hold on, that freezes the scaling so I don't have flickering on the display. I'll then draw the ground reference, going from minus 2 to plus 2 at y equals 0. Draw a box right here. And then this guy right here, this node x2, y2, is equal to this point, x1, y1 plus the length, which it shows to be 1 meter, times sine theta for x2, cosine theta for y2. Right there. Plot it all together, and you get kind of a picture of a cart. So what that looks like is if I define my states, Again, find the dynamics, integrate, and display it. You can see the display changes each time I go forward in time by dt. By throwing in this pause command right here, that holds the display for a very short time, 0.01 second. So if I then keep on displaying it, running it over and over again, I get what kind of looks like nice animation. That's what this routine does. Set DT to 0.01 second, repeat a thousand times, displaying it. And what you wind up with is the following. An animation showing the cart and pendulum, given an initial condition of 0.5 radians, swing back and forth with no input. If you notice, this is actually slightly unstable. That's because the integration I'm using, Euler integration, is not perfect. It's actually slightly unstable. So I take a system which is largely stable initially, and take a gantry system, give it an initial condition, let it go. It's not going to fly off to infinity. Because in numerical problems, it is actually slightly unstable. If I increase the sampling rate, that'll fix that, but then it runs slower. That's kind of how to do animation in the MATLAB.